Hi skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. Welcome to our weekly Top 5 Friday Ski Industry News videos. Uh, just one quick announcement before we get into the news. We are still in the month of February, which means we're still in the blizzard month of our Ski Happy Photo Contest. Um, definitely enter your photos for a chance to win. You can enter as many photos as you want. Some people, it feels like they just like dump their entire uh, entire album into the contest, which is fine. So if you feel like you want to do that, go for it. Um, so yeah, definitely try and enter if you can. You can win a pair of bona fide 97 skis. Um, and with that, I think we can just get right into the news. I don't think we have any other major announcements this week. Um, first up, as usual, some FIS ski racing news. Uh, tons of racing over the past week in Cortina for the World Championships which is great. You know, they had some delays over there. We didn't really talk about that much last week, but they did have a lot of postponed races and some, some iffy weather. Um, so yeah, tons of racing over the past week. We're not going to cover everything, um, but we did get some really good skiing and some pretty impressive results from Michaela Schifrin, including a gold in Alpine combined um, and a very, very close second in giant slalom. Um, among some other pretty notable achievements as well, but we'll just kind of highlight those two. Uh, she's now third on the all-time most world championship medals list, uh, and it kind of feels like she's pretty much back to full form. You know, at the beginning of this season, before they started racing, we were kind of speculating on what the season was going to be like for her, and a lot of us were kind of feeling like, hey, if like if by this time next year she's back to full form, like we think that... That'd be pretty darn good. Um, and it feels like she's kind of ahead of that trajectory. Um, yeah, I mean, they, just really impressive ski racing from, from Michaela Schifrin. And she seems to have some of that competitive drive back, which is exciting to see. Um, we also had some impressive skiing from other U.S. ski team athletes. Uh, another highlight, Nina O'Brien. Um, was impressively sitting in second place after the first giant slalom runs. Uh, she was 0 0.02 seconds behind Michaela Schifrin, who happened to be in first after the first runs. Uh, she did have some equipment issues and kind of made a single mistake on her second run, uh, which ultimately ended up or ultimately placed her in 10th overall, which is still a very, very respectable finish. Um, so pretty cool to see, you know, for a second it looked like we might get like a 1-2 one, two, a one, two finish from the U.S. women in giant slalom. Uh, it didn't happen, but maybe that's a, a sign of things to come next season and, and just in the future in general. Um, on the men's side of things, we didn't quite have as many really top finishers. Um, Bryce Bennett picked up a 10th in downhill and a 16th in combined. And River Radimus... I think I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, he was 8th in Parallel Slalom and 11th in Giant Slalom. Um, we're going to leave a link to all the results from the past week if you want to check it out, if you aren't aware of them already. Um, like I said, there was a ton more, a, a lot more racing, um, so plenty of other results to kind of comb through if, if you're really into that stuff. Um, so pretty exciting stuff. I wasn't able to watch everything, but I did get to see good amount of ski racing um, and yeah some some impressive skiing over the past week um, second topic of the week is as we've been doing kind of a covid theme um, and it's out of isla austria uh, which is becoming somewhat of like a covid case study um, if you remember about well a little less than a year ago really that was kind of one of the epicenters for COVID outbreaks. We talked about it on Top 5 Fridays. We actually might not have been doing videos yet then. Um, but yeah, it was kind of a, an epicenter of outbreaks, which resulted in some anger, um, even some lawsuits. You know, the, it wasn't like great news coming out of there. Um, but since then, scientists have been using the local population as like a little bit of a case study to better understand COVID antibodies. So back in April, a, a test concluded that about 42% of the population, of the local population, had COVID antibodies in their system. Now that same group was retested in November 
and about 90% of them had retained enough antibodies to protect against reinfection. So, you know, this, we're, this is practically not ski industry news at this point, um, but kind of cool to see some, you know, some knowledge being gained from what was originally not a great situation, and now it's more of a positive in the sense that they're learning a lot. Um, so, you know, a couple takeaways from that in the sense that they're kind of learning that antibodies can remain active for at least eight months. Um, and also, I would encourage reading to get more details on this, um, but they kind of talked about how hitting that percentage resulted in a certain amount of herd immunity uh, in the sense that the, the positive cases dropped fairly significantly after, you know, that initial round. So this, the fact that a lot of people had antibodies was slowing the spread. Um, so pretty interesting. Um, pretty good article, too. If you want to read more about it, I definitely encourage you to because I, I found it pretty interesting. You know, take a, take a bad situation and, and pull some positives out of it, which is cool. Um, number three, we're back to Cottonwood Canyon transportation issues. Uh, and the COG Railway seems to be gaining some traction again. Um, initially, that was kind of brushed aside or, or wasn't one of the favorites among the, the potential solutions. Uh, I think you guys all know that I'm, I'm on board for the gondola solution. I think that would be fantastic. Uh, basically, the, the gist of it behind the COG Railway is that it would be the most expensive solution to implement but it would be the fastest and have the greatest capacity. Um, it would put about 3,000 people per hour up into the mountains. Now, some of the pushback on, on the railway, um, and you know, some of it is the expense, and another different aspect of the pushback is some people are saying, like, that's too many people. And you know, a lot of people are saying, you would solve one problem, you'd solve the traffic congestion problem, but you're going to create a mountain congestion problem with just too many people in the mountains. Um, so definitely something for them to consider, and I hope that they go back to the drawing board and look at everything and say, yeah, you know what, that gondola was the best option. <laughs> uh, so I still think that, like, objectively looking at all the different all the different options, I, I still think that gondola seems like the best, and to me it's also the most fun, so like win-win, right? I, I think so. Um, so yeah, fun to have that topic back. Um, the fourth topic of the week, this is something that we've kind of gone <clears throat> in and out of and, and talking about fairly regularly on Top 5 Fridays, but it has to do with diversity in the sport of skiing. Um, and in this we get two different stories about black skiers kind of leading a push to further diversify skiing. Um, the first is from Newsday.com, which kind of highlights Henry Rivers, who's the president of the National Brotherhood of Skiers. And this is a, a topic that we specifically have talked about. His main thoughts about this idea is that the ski culture can be more inclusive simply by including more diversity in their marketing efforts. That it's it's really hard for a person of color to want to go skiing or feel like they're being invited to go skiing when they don't see themselves represented in the marketing material, which I think is like a really good point. And it feels like a pretty easy thing to do. Uh, it feels like there's not really a downside to doing that. And I think if, if it does help bring more people into the sport, then absolutely that's something that, that we should do. The second story um, is a little bit different. It's about a black businesswoman in Europe. Uh, I don't know. I'm probably going to mess up this pronunciation, as I usually do. Uh, Samasola Oak uh, started a travel business focused on all-inclusive luxury ski vacations, specifically targeting black skiers. So both of those things are pretty cool to see. You know, they're both, like, fairly new thoughts in the ski industry or, or new actions rather um, they do both they do feel different you know one is really focused on the luxury ski vacation which like there are are also arguments 
or there are also discussions right now about skiing being kind of an elitist sport that's that's difficult to attain. You know, there's some barriers to entry, and one of those barriers is is cost. So I feel like you could say like, yeah, that's like it's you're solving one problem, but but kind of escalating another problem. But I don't know, I don't necessarily know that that would be a fair assessment. Um, but definitely different. You know, one one is focused on that luxury aspect, where where the other is more of a general thought, like, hey, let's just fix or or at least tweak the way that we're marketing skiers to these different groups. Um, so. Pretty cool to see. As you know, if you watch our Top 5 Fridays videos, I'm a big fan of, of just introducing skiing to as many people as we can. Skiing is a really, really cool sport, and I think it would be great to just see what comes out of bringing more people into it. Um, generally, nothing bad happens when you introduce something to a lot more people, you know. If anything, we'll get some new thoughts and new ideas, new developments, maybe new solutions to different problems, stuff like that. So I'm, I'm all for it. Um, lastly, we have our edits of the week. First up is a profile of Rene Barkin Barkered. I always like have such a hard time. Bark Barkered. The way that he pronounces his name is like I listen to it so many times, and I'm just like, those are not sounds that I can make with my mouth. So I'm sorry, uh, but it's, uh, Dina Star did a profile of him. Uh, his nickname is the Mayor of Stomp Town. Um, pretty successful freeride skier. He's had a lot of good finishes on the Freeride World Tour. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I, I think his personality comes through really well in the video. He tells a story of how he got into it, all that kind of stuff. There's some funny, you know, funny stories in there too. Um, so definitely encourage you to watch that. The second edit of the week, and these second two aren't even really edits, but definitely worth watching. Um, this first one is Field Day in American Fork which is basically looking at like how sketchy the avalanche conditions in Utah are right now. And they do some snow testing techniques and, and I, yeah, I just found it really fascinating. You know, we don't do quite as much of that stuff here in Vermont. Avalanches are still definitely a concern here on the East Coast as we've seen in recent weeks, like the accident in New Hampshire. Um, but, you know, we're not, we're not out there with a snowpack like this very often and we're generally not doing like this in-depth testing so i just found it really interesting from an objective perspective of like this is how they test snowpack um, but yeah you should definitely watch it because it, it really gives it, it really helps understand why the conditions are so bad instead of just saying they are bad um, and then lastly i i, I feel like i shouldn't even try to pronounce this name, uh, Muz Muzaton. Mm. Um, you guys probably saw this, it was all over social media. It was like a 70 mile an hour nose butter 180 save. Um, I think it was in a downhill course. It might have been a super G course, but pretty incredible. Some people are saying it's lucky, uh, but I, I think there's some composure and, and at least like calmness in there that resulted in him not crashing horribly bad. Um, pretty interesting just to like see the physics of, of why he ended up back on his feet. Um, and that's it. That's Top 5 Fridays for the week. I uh, hope you guys all have a great weekend. I hope you get out on snow. Hope the snow is stable where you are. Probably not. Don't, don't think it is anywhere really. Um, but yeah, hopefully you're all able to get out on snow and, and hope you have a great weekend.